If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. Nico, the future must be bright, man. Tuesday uh, night, no, we, you, you we need the shades. We, we we keep the shades on and we keep the hats on. Uh, when when we're meeting business is all I'm gonna say. And and the Rocky Mountain Showdown, business baby, all business over here. Yeah, no, we're definitely gonna get into the Rocky Mountain Showdown. We have to touch on the PLL Championship because we did so much water dog. Or damn it, I did it again. We did so much Redwoods content, which you can see Nico's still re- wearing his Redwood gear. We are going to cover the PLL championship. We'll talk about the champion series when it comes up later on. That'll be kind of like a buffer between um, football ending and, and other things starting up. We will do week three, the pick We'll talk about how uh, I screwed myself over the summer with my trivia. Cause if it hadn't been for that, Nico and I would be tied, but we have all of that to get to episode 151 or the far end of the bench podcast. I'm coming to you right after my parent teacher conferences. So, those last two little brain cells, they are running things. It's overtime. I don't have enough money to pay my brain cells overtime, so we'll see how it ends up tonight. We're recording late night Tuesday, but we do have plenty of things to get into, and obviously the pick is during the NFL season. I think the pick is what people really come to see, so follow at FEOTV Pod. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get all the updates about all the content that we have coming out because we're basically doing five hours of content a week during the NFL season. Nico, I know I'm tired. I'm sure that you're also tired, but we we did this. We're we're scheduling. We're grinding. Um, what are what, what's with the what's been going on? Oh well, first of all, and look, I, it's we record on Tuesdays, we record on Wednesdays. This shit sucks. I'll be honest with you, because I gotta find shows to watch on during the week, man. It's it's brutal because you know during basketball season, I just Tuesday night Nuggets came on. Wednesday night abs game on. I can watch those. I can find something to watch. When it's the beginning of football season, I have to wait until Thursday again uh, to, to have any football on, unfortunately. And, look, I'm not a person that watches the MAC because I think the MAC goes on Wednesdays. Is MAC doesn't wrong? go until Wednesdays until November. So Either way, ridiculous. So, like I said, it's, it's trying to find stuff. And, and look, luckily, we have, luckily there's one program in the state of Colorado that is carrying the weight of the whole state in terms of football because, because the professional team cannot do shit. So, so luckily I'm on, I'm on that bandwagon um, because my, because I was lucky uh, uh, my brothers went there so I could ride that bandwagon until it falls off. But um, the bandwagon for, for football, I, 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 when I came on the talk of the gridiron, I said it. Um, basketball season starts October 24th, and the banner goes up that day. So, um, yeah, we, we I'm still counting down the days. But, you know, I have I have some football. And, look, there's PLL Championship this weekend, so I got that to put me over instead of drowning my tears in the Broncos game that ass kicked by the Dolphins probably on Sunday. I, I think there's a new new season at Yellowstone coming out at some point. And I, don't, I don't know. It what is, yeah, it is. It's, it's, except I have to catch it live, which is uh, or I have to wait until it comes out on on the on the cock, uh, which we'll, we'll have to wait. Uh, which I'm not very patient. So, yeah, that, I'm I'm a couple seasons behind, so I have to catch up on that. That's basically that Peaky Blinders that takes up my time that I'm not spending sleeping. Um, you did come on talk to the gridiron. I appreciate you because you took some of the bullets off of me. I was taking all the heat. For the Bengals, I was taking the heat for the Broncos, and Terrell is a Redskins slash football team. Fan- I, I don't commanders. know what his fan of this, Jimmy. He wasn't wearing any Commanders gear, so like, there I, was no I, NFL. I, yeah, there was no know. NFL memorabilia in the video. That is true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little weird. It's a little bandwagon. If, if I say, you, you know what? I I wish I would have been able to do if I had the editing skills. I would have done it. But like taking you, you have you seen that episode of South Park where Cartman they start a startup company and they use the Washington Redskins name. Yep. Washington Redskins, go fuck yourself. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. We'll take your money. I wish I could have put that over the top of Terrell speaking. Uh, when we were talking about the Broncos and Commanders game specifically, we'll get into that when we talk about last week's picks. Um, honestly, football right now, I'm right there with you. I think hockey season, they just reported to camp. I've been listening to tell it as it is, our guys over there. I'm I'm getting ready for that because – the Bengals, the Broncos, we're back in the dire straits. <laughs> we had two great, or I had two great you years. You had two great time. years. Huh? It's been a-, a struggle. It has not been fun. But if you remember back to the very, very first episodes of this show, you know football is never fun. Football season is, it's a lot of hope. 
It's a lot of expectations. It's, it's a lot, lot of, of it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of talking about other big time storylines, as our friend Terrell would say. Um, yeah. Because our two teams, uh, mine specifically, every single year, it's me putting on the clown face, being like, "Oh, here we go again. I think this team could make the playoffs." That's oh, right. Well, but, uh, and just 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 thinking that that my team has a chance every year, and and then it just backfires right in my face. So like, and you, look, I'll talk about it when we get to the pickup. Um, but but there's uh, I will there will be a theme for me at picking the Broncos the rest of the season is all I'm going to say is there will be a thing. I'm excited to hear. I'm excited to hear it. We're going to get into our football afterwards. We're kicking things off with the PLL championship Atlas number one seed versus the second seeded. Oh, nope, it, it's the, it's the uh, archers versus the wire dogs. Oh yeah. The archers who beat my team's ass, unfortunately, but yeah, it is. Yeah. The Atlas, it was the name Atlas, with the A. That's all I knew. Yeah. It, it, it's the A, but yeah, the archers uh, coming in as the number one team, obviously all season long. And then, um, the Wire Dogs, obviously the reigning champions. Two teams that came off of two massive wins, massive wins um, in the semifinals. Um, the Archers uh, didn't have as big of a win, obviously losing Connor Fields um, to that injury in the semifinal. I'm not sure what his status is going to this weekend. Um, that could play into a big factor. We'll see what that looks like. And the Wire Dogs obviously just came in, demolished the Cannons, absolutely demolished them. So, and look, I, as much as I, I, I um, I think that we had a real chance of winning it all. I think that we had we had the um, we had we had we had what it took to, to lift the trophy. Um, I will say this is probably two of the best teams going into the championship game we could have asked for. Uh, two of the hottest teams for sure. Um, unfortunately, it's not us, but uh, the, these two teams are very very good, top to bottom, defensively, offensively, um, in the net. So uh, they, they, they each each team has um, what it takes to, to to lift it. It's anybody's game, and and come. Uh... What what is it? Se- September twenty fourth. It's on Sunday. Is that Sunday, the yep. championship game is on Sunday? By the end of that two hours, however long the the game normally takes, that is one of the good things about the PLL speeding things up and and the action is constant. We talked about it when when my brother and I were able. You got us tickets. We sat with your family and watched the the Denver show out here. We obviously have the big announcement coming up in November as to where the host cities are. We're going to do some content around that because it's where does Nico get to work for the next however I'll long. Say, I'll, do, I'll do pitches every single week until we get there. Rocky Mountain Redwood sound really good. It's all Rocky saying. Mountain Redwood is and, very, very good. <laughs> and, I mean, would DU be where they set up or where would they set up? Is I, there I, a field? They, they, they probably maybe look into uh, – Dick Sporting Goods Field uh, with Rapids yeah. play, possibly. But then again, I Rapids really hope that they don't have to settle on, on Commerce City. I know that that's a big uh, open space. Oh, at, at Glenwood, where, where the Raptors play. Or Glen, not Glenwood, uh, Glendale. Yeah, that, that Glendale, would, be, yeah. would be tough. I'll say that. It would be tough. So the, we're, we're going to get into that. But this weekend with the championship and the fact that now this is two weeks, two times in a row, the PLL is going to be on a NFL Sunday. They are – giving this the the attention that it deserves because it is a professional league championship. These guys are going to go on. These two teams both also qualified for the champ series. It was the top four teams in the league. And it is the number one versus number two seed defending champions. I think it's number yep. three seed, but because uh, I think the Cans were the two, but it's still it's the reigning champs versus the number one team. Like, Their storylines good lord. This yeah. is like a this is the best case scenario. Well not best case scenario because I know we we would have had a better scenario but for the league this is a very good scenario because you're getting the most attention. You get to showcase your former champion. Do you get to see somebody go back to back? I think you said it would be, would they be the second team in PLL history to go back to back? PLL history. If you don't go to MLL history, yes. Second team in PLL history, the Whips next to it, the first two years of existence. Yeah. So they would be trying to start their dynasty because everybody knows it takes three to make a dynasty, but you got to win two before you can win three. Uh, I am a, a Water Dogs fan by proxy because I do enjoy that Barstool show that ends up owning them. It's hilarious when they dog them, pun intended, dog in the Water Dogs. But um, I'm excited. If if by chance that you know the Bengals game doesn't happen to be – well, the Bengals don't even play on Sunday. So there is a good chance that I have the PLL championship on. I'm addicted to football, but – I can put it on a second screen. I'll tell you right now, things, things go south for the Broncos real quick. I'm not even getting into the half second of my time. So, so that I, I will, I will throw this game on and obviously have. I mean, look, whether or not the Broncos game is Broncos are playing well, I will have this game on. I believe it might be on ABC, um, which is obviously look primetime TV, primetime slot during NFL Sunday, which is absolutely crazy to think about the sport of the cross having. Obviously, the viewership, we'll see what it looks like. Um, but putting this many eyes on this sport is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Because like I said, some people, some people don't know what channels games are on. 
So some people will accidentally click number seven and go to ABC when they think, or, or NBC, thinking that, that, thinking that they, oh, I'm actually, uh, uh, the, is NFL on this channel? Like, oh, there's a cross on team. Let's see what this is. And boom, the, the sport grows. So it's awesome for the sport. Um, like I said, unfortunately, we're not there. Um, it's going to be a great game. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind. Two of the hottest goalies in Dobson and, and obviously um, Dylan Ward. And then you have uh, – one of the best rookies, um, and, and Mike Sisselberger as well, um, on the faceoff, dominating. Uh, it's yeah. going to be a very, very, very good game, in my opinion. Nigo's not going to make predictions because he does still work for one of the teams in the league. I would say my predictions, my be- my very biased opinion is that the Water Dogs win, we get the two championships, and they get to start their quest for a number three. It would be cool to see a dynasty. I'm just saying. I know that we want the Redwoods to have success. I hope that it's Redwoods, wa- Water Dogs, Next year in the championship, and the Redwoods are the ones that upset the two-time defending champions. All, the, uh... all I'll say is, if we if we look, if the Archers win, then we could say we 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 lost the team that won it all. If the Water Dogs win, we we're one of the few teams that beat them all year. So, like I said, we're not far. Is all I'm gonna say. We're not far. No, and it was right there. You were a top four team in the, in the league. You're going to the championship champ series for a reason. There there are good things going on. For the, for the Redwoods and moving forward, once we figure out where they're going to be, they possibly could become another team of added to the affiliates of this show. Um, they're already basically that affiliate. But if it's a Denver team, we are a Denver-based podcast. So this is where a majority of our listeners are. Half of uh, the show will be a Redwoods podcast no matter what, where we're at. I'm just hoping that that, that it's close. <laughs> it's all I will, that, it's I'll close. basically adopt the Redwoods anywhere. You know, if it's Boston Redwoods, I cannot get behind a Boston. No, I, I guarantee you, it won't be Boston Redwoods because it'll be Boston Cannons. Like, that's, it'll be. It'll have to be. I the know, Boston that's Cannons, not confirmed. So. Don't don't for, for those marks out there. That is not confirmed. But all I'm gonna say is, I'd be very very surprised if it's not. And I think the whole world, the PLL world, says the exact same thing. I I think I tend to agree with you. Um, it may seem like we're going quickly through this. I'm. I we're getting through the content. We're talking about everything. PLL Championship, be sure to check it out. ABC, it is Sunday. I have the time here. It'll start at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. So actually, I think it starts – it's right in the middle of those that first slot of games or possibly starting at halftime. So I'm obviously – One TV of, can have Red Zone. One TV can have a PLL. Look, you get everything. Perfect. That's the both – if you're not, a, you're not a true sports fan if you don't have more than one screen going at once. Exactly. That's all I'm going like, to tell you? people. Who are you at this point? You you need to have more than one screen or go somewhere that has it. It's Buffalo Wild Wings. That's – I've enjoyed a couple games. All I'm going to say is if I go somewhere to watch the game, I will make them put it on the TV. And, 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 I, and I don't care. I don't care if I get weird looks. I will. I Yeah. Uh, let's, get, let's get to the point where why you're wearing the shades because – we had an all-out brawl over in Boulder on Saturday night that the country was privy to, so we're going to talk about this. I've talked about it on two shows already this week. We're going to talk about it again on this show. I'm going to make pretty much the same points. Um, very, very tightly contested game. It's a rivalry game. It's what you expected. CSU loves that rivalry. They love to say every time that they get to beat CU, and I texted my dad. I was like, it just seems that CSU has a little bit more intense passion for this. It's like They're always the little brother. They're always the other school. They're not the power five school in Colorado. So they have a a chip to play with on their shoulder. They let that out and they stood behind their coach's comments. Like they were blue collar. They were workhorses. um, Couldn't keep their emotions in check. I mean, that's, that's the big thing. If there's not as many personal fouls against CSU, I say there's a a better than 60% chance that the outcome of the game goes differently. Because yeah, the Rams yeah. shot themselves in the foot all night. Absolutely. And look, all kudos to, to what CSU did. And and, and look, Jay Norvell's comments, obviously, look, he did, he meant nothing personal by it. CU has this thing called saying it, it, they made it personal, but that's just one way to motivate themselves. Um, but look, CSU is a program where this rivalry means a little bit more to them. I, I, I know it's weird saying that, but – like we said, this Colorado football team has how many transfers, Jimmy? 83? 70, 80, yeah. 80, 80 something, 80 something transfers. That means only a handful of guys have played in this game before. And, and majority of, the, of those CSU guys have either A, played in this game before, or B, been a part of or been, been around to see this, this, this rivalry take shape. And for those around the country that watch this Rocky Mountain showdown for, the, showdown for the first time in its history, this is what it always is. 
It is, plain and simple. It has never been an absolute blowout. I think the largest blowout was, I think, near 16 to 20 points, and that was 20 years ago. It's been a very, very long time since this game has been a blowout. That's just kudos to the, to, to the two teams and what the state puts on every year. Um, and, and, look, there is no denying that – CU's Louis luggage got them over the top. It absolutely did. And Shador Sanders is he's a, he's a Heisman candidate. And for those that don't believe it, time to wake up. Time to Heisman wake up. Heisman candidate. He good. looks like he's going to be able to make it in the NFL because he's winning these games. Yes, he's making – he's got a hell of an arm. I was oh, of the mindset awesome. not seeing him before he played at CU. I barely watched any of Jackson State. It was mainly him just running around because he was able to do that at, at that level. But his arm talent is there. He's got the size. He works with guys like Tom Brady in the offseason. He's winning these clutch situations. That 98-yard drive does not happen because Shadur Sanders was the best athlete on the field on either yeah, side. 98 yards down the field. That's right. Look, and you're down by eight with, with two and a half, two two minutes of change left. Like yeah. that's that's a big score. time drive. That's a big yeah. time drive by a young kid. Yeah, young and I'm hoping we get two seasons of Shadur as the quarterback for CU. He is draft not eligible. Me, not me. Uh, not me is all I'm going to say. Is, I know uh, not you. Not me. Well, like I said, I will uh, I'll allude to that in the pick. You but, want Drake uh, May. Me. You don't want Shadur. I want Shadur to stick around at CU for a second. I, I look, look, I, 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 we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there, but there's zero denying what Shadur – and look, if it wasn't for someone named Caleb Williams, like he'd be the best quarterback in a Power 5 conference. And, and his first year, absolutely. Like, like he'd be the best quarterback in the Pac-12. He's Baron Bo Nix is right now. He's and look, he and what Caleb Williams has done. And yeah, it hasn't been. It's, it's been two programs against bad schools. And we'll see two weeks from now when USC comes into Boulder and what what that looks like. Well, heck, we'll see this week when you when CU goes into Oregon and and, and what happens there. But this is a big time player. And obviously, look, we can talk about the. Talk about the um, emergence of, of Shiloh and Dylan Edwards and all that, but obviously, look, Travis Hunter being out is going to hurt this team. Absolutely will. And, and um, was it a late hit? Absolutely, it was. Could it have been? It was a, dirty. A, a, it was not it, necessary. It, it should have been ejection. Yes, he should not have been able to finish that game. Could it have been an ejection? Absolutely. Um, the, the one thing I will say is there should be no death threats on that kid. He played an absolutely stellar game. And look, and look, it's a, it's it's by no means did he say that's Travis Hunter. Let me go lie his ass up. That is not that that is that was not his goal. And that's just something where you know what he, he felt it's a rivalry game. You gotta set the tone a little bit. And he felt as though a big hit on on, on a receiver, whoever it may be, unfortunately it's Travis Hunter, is something that 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 would have helped help his team and their momentum. And, and believe it or not, it did, worthy enough. It, it really did. It did. It helped both sides. It elevated the game from that point because you see Shadur go get in. I can't – I don't know the safety's name off the top she of my poked, head. But. Oh yeah, he poked his eyes, which is which is also a little bit of a dirty play um, yeah. during that snuggle. But like I said, it's a rivalry game. Let's not forget about that. Yeah, it's two schools that – for, to most of this country, no one gives a fuck about outside of this past year, but it's a rivalry game where these two schools hate each other, okay? And, and, and if you go listen to Joe Klatt's show, you can go listen to uh, uh, any any CU alumni or CSU alumni. They'll say, I don't care if we go 1-11 like CU did last year. If the one wins against CSU or if the one wins against Nebraska, that's all that matters. It really is. And that's the same thing with what CSU was saying themselves. Like I said, that they would have won that game, their season would have been made. And and, yeah. and CU obviously has bigger aspirations this year because of because of what Dion's done. But this game has that big effect on these kids and, and the alumni in the state. What I think, too, it was a good call for CU. It was a good fight because they – they were getting so much love and appreciation for what they've done and rightfully so, but you can't, it's hard to stay hungry when you get all of that praise. So now you have things to work on. The defense does not look right out of three outside of three stellar plays by Shiloh. That defense got absolutely trounced by a very simple concept. Jay Norvell didn't have to go into the annals of the playbook. No, he was able to just run basically the first Ask Madden play because if you ran a short short route underneath that zone coverage, drive they were letting you catch it and run. I, I, and run. I've never seen drive routes run that well. I'm going to give all kudos Dude, to Tory Holt, <laughs> I had never heard the name before. Tory Holt's going to be a problem. Not, in, I, I think it's Horton. I think because Tory Holt was the Rams Torrey guy. Horton. Yeah, the, 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 the wide receiver for the Rams, that guy's going to be playing on Sundays. Number Absolutely 14. Be. Yeah, he's going to be and, on and Kamara, the, def, the defensive oh, that, end that they the have. Big boy, the, the big boy that got ejected in overtime. Yeah, that, that kid. Look, CSU has players. 
Yeah. Absolutely will. They're and a look, good team. They're a seven win football team average for the past three seasons under Jay Norville. Absolutely. And Jay Norville has done the great job um, elevating that program. Obviously, look, Dion is a different animal, but if you look at the landscape of things, CSU has been the more successful program over the last couple of years. There's zero denying that. Um, after Mel Tucker leaving, which Mel Tucker, funny enough, got fired um, this week um, and, and he got bought out, but I, after him leaving from Michigan State, CSU's program just went after the shit and see, you could see CSU take that next step a little bit of Jay Norville. Um, so, look, th- this, this game – in general, like I said, you said it perfectly when you tweeted it out. It put the state's football on the map. High school football, college football, everything in general. This state has been 100% Denver Broncos football, and that's all people think about when you think about Colorado football. It's, and look, and rightfully so. Look at the names that have played in the orange and blue. And But you, when you think about what CU has done over this year and the amount of attention, the amount of – and look, the attention that that is, is awarded to them has been – has been has been given like like the, the, they have they have shown the promise back to them being like you know what this is we're that good we deserve this attention and look you can say what you want about these first three matchups it's three top tier programs obviously CSU is not a big program but two top tier programs and one big rivalry game that they won obviously beginning of the Pac-12 schedule that's where things get interesting but but putting the but putting Colorado on the map like CU has and what Dion has having the Rock having Little Wayne having and Offset. having offset Kawhi Leonard who doesn't even go go to his own basketball games uh there Chauncey Kyle Lowry you name the name they're probably there um in attendance for a Rocky Mountain showdown it's yeah. just it's just so awesome it's it's so awesome and, and like I said for uh, I, I have a side and it's CU um but like I said I have I have both sides in the, in the hat with my parents going to CSU so I am very very and obviously growing up in the state watching the football uh, the state has grown so much since 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 when since when you and I started playing football in general 2005 2006 whenever it was so it it has grown so much and and I could not be more thankful that the Rocky Mountain Showdown is now the highest most watched college football game this season and top five most watched all time college football games in ESPN history top five all time. It is, it is it is number five in terms of viewership and, and of all time. Every single game that we're talking, Texas versus USC, we're talking about all those great games that ESPN has put on the late slot. O- Ohio State, Alabama, top five. That is that is wild, and, 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 and it is awesome to see. It was a perfect send up. It was just an a awesome showcase, and I tweeted it out with the perspective of a coach in the state it used to be like we used to have to fight, scratch, and claw. They were not looking for Colorado guys to go to these big time programs because it was just assumed that, oh, you're out in the Midwest, you guys don't play real football. We have, it has grown, it has gotten better since we started. I agree with you because the kids that are out there now are doing things that I couldn't even have thought of doing when I was that age. Um, but it was, it, it meant something to claim to be the best school in Colorado on Saturday night. And that was proven in the ratings. That was proven in the way ESPN handled it. They had Lewis Riddick, who's normally an NFL commentator, come down and be the color commentator for this game. Yeah, I, I don't like him as a football. I don't know. I've never listened to him as a lacrosse announcer. No, no, but... no, 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 no. Mark Jones is the basketball guy. He hates Nuggets um, for every passion of him. Uh, um, Nuggets still will who, What's the name of the guy of, what, of that announcer? I don't know. What... Clint Kessenich. Kessenich. Yeah, he was, he was the sideline guy that interviewed uh, Little Wayne on the sideline there. That, 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 not, not in my wildest dreams did I expect a, a high-level PLL comp, commentator on the sideline for a uh, one of the most highest viewed uh, – Weezy, Weezy out here. You know, uh, it was awesome. I was, I was super proud to be a Colorado native. I know that you were as well. And then you obviously, <clears throat> uh, my family tends to lean more towards CSU, but I, I really don't have a stake. I just like watching it and, and it being a good game. It's, I like it better when it's at the school stadiums too. I know it was cool for the guys to play in at mile high, but it, it's so much better when it's at Folsom and when it's going to be in Fort Collins the next time that they play. Because it just the back and forth and the commute that everybody you get multiple people to travel both places. It doesn't have to be a neutral site game. It's already a big enough deal as it is. We don't need to add any more pomp and circumstance. And in fact, I liked seeing CU have to defend their home field against a very pissed off and riled up CSU Rams team. And next year when they play in, in Fort Collins, I'm expecting the Buffaloes to try and go in there and trample all over the CSU. And CSU is going to have to stand up and protect their home field. And it's going to be personal again. 
I don't think that this rivalry is going anywhere. I think it's going to continue no, to be no, high-level no, matchups. Because yeah. you can't tell me that TSU's yeah. program isn't going to yeah. benefit from that that on Saturday night too. They're still oh, going to – that's great recruiting for them with guys that are possibly coming through. I don't want to be on Dion's side. I like Jay Norvell. Maybe I want to go to CSU, and I know I'm going to play in that rivalry, and that's going to be big time football. Maybe maybe Dion, maybe Dion snubbed me, and maybe 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 yeah. he said no to me because I want to go to CU. Well, CSU is right down the road, and they have programs on the rise. It's, it's, like I said, it's massive, massive for Colorado yeah. in general. It was an awesome moment um, Saturday night. Stayed up late for it. The game ended up. I know. I thought people don't stay up late because it was a 10 p.m. East Coast start. So the fact that it's the fifth highest rated game. Of all time, that's on ESPN. Damn right. so that's, that's on ESPN, yes. Really but just he, that, that was the big gripe about Chris McCaffrey when he was at Stanford is that nobody on the East Coast, none of the Heisman voters stayed up to watch their games. Well, they stayed up to watch Coach Prime and Jay Norvell absolutely time, time slug effect. it out. It's the prime time effect, baby. Prime effect. And he doesn't need the money. He was on 60 Minutes. He was on the season premiere of 60 Minutes after the first first two Sundays of NFL. And he has all those commercials. The, the dude just looks like he's having a blast. Got a if you're hating on him, shades money coming his way. I mean, like I said, the dude is just here. If to you're hating at generation. this point, you just you just don't like seeing somebody succeed. Exactly. Like the only people that should be hating is if you're a rival of this team. That's a CSU fan. That's a Nebraska fan. That's a CSU. And that fan. Oregon coach. Did you see Oregon already made it personal? They made it personal a couple months back, and and yeah. this is the, like I said, this is the first. Big test. First yeah. big test. So I, be I just hope. Very interesting yeah. game. 20 and a half point underdogs. Again, same thing they had against TCU. 20 and a half. 20 and a half. That's what it, that's what it was um, when I looked at it on uh, Monday morning. I, I don't know if it changed right now, but that, you know I'm going to be Honestly, <laughs> you know who I think that should piss off the most? And it has nobody involved in that game. But that should piss off CSU the most. Because yeah. here, I don't think that CSU should have been a 20-point dog to Colorado. I think that was a little bit skewed, and it definitely skewed people's opinion of CU coming out of that game. But that pisses me off if I'm a CSU Ram or a CSU Ram supporter because, like we said, you are a problem to deal with in the Mountain West. Boise doesn't like playing against the Rams. Nobody in that conference likes playing against the Rams. You've been building something for a while. Why the fuck is the team that we just battled it out with, why are they 20-point dogs? Sure, they should be maybe a touchdown. Maybe a touchdown. I don't think Oregon's shown – that they're all oh, that man. great. Oh. They they can score. Like if Bo Nix is coming out and they're on fire and CU finally gets shocked in the bubble burst, yeah, it could look ugly. So I guess maybe that's where Vegas is going, but they're normally looking the other way. Like I thought this was this line was going to shrink, whether or not Saturday looked as ugly as it did. Well, we'll see if it shrinks doesn't get there. I, I would I would highly I, I think it's going I'd be highly surprised if it didn't shrink is all I'm gonna say. So there, I, there's I, gonna be so much money on CU, they're gonna have to move that line a little bit. Just, you see just, that, that that FanDuel lost two million dollars off of the boost that they gave for a touchback on every single game of or, or every single one o'clock slate. No, sorry, not touchback. Every every single team on the one o'clock slate game ha- had to kick a field goal. And it was a 201, 200 to one dollar, two hundred to one payout. It means bet one dollar, win two hundred dollars. They lost two million dollars because of that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I don't, I know you didn't watch the Sopranos, but there's a scene where because they're bookies and they're setting the lines and they didn't set the lines right, so they're watching the game and it's you get to see the other side. So normally you see the gambler like, I need a fucking field goal, come on. The guy's like, No, I need six more points, otherwise I lose the spread. Come on, I can't, I don't have the money to pay everybody that's gonna win. Please. Don't kick the field goal. Miss the field goal, please. Everybody needs to score. Uh, I The Bengals, unfortunately, contributed to that because I don't know if you saw the Sunday Scaries. I know that we talked about it on Talking the Gridiron. Uh, do you have anything else on CU before we move oh, off of college no, football? I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for Oregon, Oregon game, but that's, that's about it. I'm definitely watching. I'm tuning in for the rest of the season because I didn't expect them to be 3-0 at this point. They're – they're gonna be in a bowl game, and like we said, they're possibly looking at if they, they go their wins. They tripled their wins off of last. Tripled year. their wins, oh, and win. look funny, me. How ridiculous do I sound? It's so difficult to add one more win to your season record, let alone two. I told, if I you told get you to two three, and one at the minimum. I told you two and one at the minimum. Three and zero. Oh, uh, I'm very surprised at three and zero, oh, but two and one at the minimum. This Oregon <laughs> game is the biggest test. 
Yeah. What I notice more now that I've been on more shows throughout the week, the more shows that you're on, the more stupid you sound. Because, um, man, the last cough, couple cough, weeks. Cough, cough, Stephen A. Smith. So yeah. Yeah, there's zero denying that. And he's still got a job. So uh, we're moving on into the pick em. It, I will reveal the records first. I did tell me did tell you that you're still ahead two games. You want to know what your record is? Is it good? I I, I know I got the uh, Ravens on you. I know I yeah. did that. I you got I the lost, Ravens on me. You got – you got. I think I won Monday night too, didn't I? You won oh, – I know I lost the Panthers. You lost the Panthers, and we both lost the Browns. So you ended up having one, two, three wins. I ended up having one, two, three, four. Um, still down by two. You were ahead by three initially. You had that three lead out of our trivia. So your record on the season, eight and six. My record is six and five. We're picking five games again this for the week three. But before that, we're going to get back into week two. Um, those matchups, Thursday night football. We're going to talk about the Eagles because they continue to show up in prime time. So we're going to continue to pick their games. Um, what, what, I, I don't know that you probably haven't watched, sat down and watched their entire game. But just with what you're seeing, what you're hearing about what's going on in Philadelphia, do you have an opinion as to what the issue is? Because I kind of said what my opinion is, but what do you think is the issue facing Philadelphia? I think it's selfishness. I, I think that's 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 the biggest thing right now offensively. It's it's crying about touches when your team's winning. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing for me right now. Is it's a lot of prima donnas. And look, uh, there's there's some guys on that team that won a Super Bowl in 2017. What was it? 2017, 2018, whatever yeah, 2017. it was. Whatever it was. Um, you have to check your ego at the door. When this team's this good, like top to bottom, defense is still one of the best defenses in football, if not the best. And you have an offense that is this talented across the board. You have DeAndre Swift go off for, I think it was 150 yards rushing. And then you have De- Devontae Smith have two touchdown games. And then you have A.J. Brown crying and bitching about touches. Are we serious right now? Like, like, like that's, that, that's, that's the biggest problem right now. And that's that. That's that. That's in my opinion what what they're dealing with. It's it's check your ego at the door if you want to win so badly. Look, AJ Brown got paid. Let's not forget AJ Brown got paid, ladies and gentlemen. So the motherfucker worrying about touches at, with, on a winning team, that's a that's a that's a that's a problem in the locker room. That's that is a massive problem in the locker room. And look, I think Jason Kelsey, I think Jalen Hurst, the company have, have led this team to a great position where they can handle that. And because look, when I say when I see when I see this defense, Jimmy, it's it's the Georgia defense, basically. Right? It is the Georgia defense. It's Nolan Smith, it's Javon Carter, who looks like an absolute fucking animal. Jay, um, yeah. Jalen Carter, They're, sorry. Jalen, Jalen Carter, Carter, Travon Walker. No, those guys are they they invested their draft picks in defensive line and oh my god it worked out jalen carter every time he's on the field i just have nightmares and flashbacks like he's how, making the, how the hell did i play screen. i didn't play the same level of college football as him but how the hell did we play the same technical sport because if i were to have to go out there i am a foot shorter and 150 pounds lighter on a good day of jalen carter so whatever he wants to do he's doing He's doing it, yeah. it, it's and there's no negotiating about it. And funny enough, the Vikings offensive line, and this is the only thing that we have to say about the Vikings. A Kirk Cousins didn't lose you this primetime game, but I think you should look at maybe trading your quarterback to New York. Cough cough. It's the last year of his deal. Cough cough. They could use cough. a quarterback. Cough cough. There's um, a good draft quarterback draft class coming up. Cough cough. You have a really good receiver that that, that could say Aaron Rodgers said that he's really coming cough, back. Cough. So, you know, Vikings look into it. You could probably swindle the, the Jets out of a few of their picks, but they had nobody on the offensive line. I've said the line a couple times from Major League, but those guys were bagging groceries three weeks ago because Jalen, there were a couple times where the offensive lineman went to punch Jalen Carter in the chest and he swiped his hands away so fast that the offensive lineman fell on his face. He, he made I, Mr. Miyagi proud, being playing it simple. Like, Mr. Wax, yeah, learning, wax on, Mr. wax off. Mr. Miyagi is learning from Jalen Carter. Let's just put it that way, okay? That's that's that that's how good his hand movement is is on the inside. And look, top to bottom, those DBs. Obviously, they lost CJ Garner Johnson on the outside. They still have great DBs. Like they, like Justin Jefferson and, and Jordan Addison are not too easy covers. They did a really really good job of containing both of them. Like, look, I, I've been saying it. The, the, everyone's high on this 49ers team. I still think the Eagles are the team to lose in the NFC. And the reason and, – and I think the biggest problem is what I said. It, it's it's ego check, plain and simple, because there's a lot, a lot of egos. And when you live and play in the state of, or city of Philadelphia, it's going to happen. And they're going to be mad over stupid shit. 
How, like I said, Jimmy, what do they do on Christmas Day back way back when? They booed Santa Claus. Exactly. And there's snowballs on him. Let's not forget, okay? Yeah. And they booed their team that just went into the Super Bowl after the second drive of the game on, 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 in their first game. Let's not you forget You booed your today. team. I booed my team. It's a lot different, though. We are not – I mean, especially for me. I mean, it's kind of the same for you, but it's a lot different from my end. <laughs> but yeah. I, it is it is, it is, is very, very funny how, how, how much of a greatness we're talking about, right? We're talking about problems for a 2-0 and team. And, and I'll go back to what I said on Talking the Grid on it. It's a 2-0 and team that you're like, you know what, we can fix these because um, we're winning. And we're winning. And then th- th- that's all that matters. I, I have uh, another storyline. It also goes in with the ego, but I'm going to save it for when we're previewing their pick for – um, this upcoming Monday night because they're the first of the Monday night doubleheader. Broncos, uh, you want to go Broncos or Bengals first? Because we did Bengals what, first last week. What, what solemn song? What solemn song do you want to sing first? Yeah, let's let's go Commanders because the interesting part about this was the first half. I had we, fun, Jimmy. It was, it was yeah, fun. it was fun. I had fun. We all took a nap for the second half and woke up and and they were throwing a hail mary to try and tie it to go to overtime. I was like, what in the hell did we just watch? Um, what do we miss? Yeah, this, this, what did I miss here? I, I don't know what to think, Jimmy. This defense is so bad. This, like, like I said, this defense should be the backbone of this team. Let me remind you who the defensive coordinator is of this Denver Broncos team. The coach that was fired less than three years ago came back. Vance Joseph in that, you know, that top tier defense in Arizona, Jimmy, that top level defense that the Cardinals had the last four years. Um, and Vance Joseph, we needed that. We we needed that big time. Um, so there, there's a first problem. The fact that your offense, look, look, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about Russell Wilson in the first half. My God, Russell Wilson in the second half, the motherfucker could not see over the line. He cannot. I, I, and I, I have been a component that that's not a problem, but at this point when the guy is unwillingly to move out of the pocket, unless it's right into the, his offensive lineman, then, the, then that becomes a problem. I'm serious. And it becomes a problem. Um, and look, your running game was not going anywhere. You were not doing anything in the running game. Nothing. You had look, Marvin Mims did a hell of a job in the first half, did nothing in the second half. Nothing. Didn't even get a touch. You have two receivers that that, that one you dropped in the first round, Jerry Judy, who 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 everyone's saying it could be could be the one of the best, one of the best, not if not the best, one of the best uh route runners in the league. And then you have Cortland Sutton, who was a pro bowler not too long ago. And mm-hmm. we say, you know what? Uh let's uh let's uh let's let's do dunk and dip with, with good old Russell Wilson and, and and have him throw to look luckily we have a fullback now. Shout out Michael Burton. But let's do dunk and dip to our fullback because that's a that's a good play when, when we're trying to when we're trying to win the game. You know, when you're de- when you're up by what was it, 21 to 3 in the yeah. second quarter, it takes a lot, Jimmy. It takes a lot to come back that quickly and with five minutes on the clock, you go down by seven. Midway through the second quarter, that is how that is less than 30 minutes of football. In less than 30 minutes of football, you went up from 21 to 3 to down to 21 to 28 to 21. That is impressive. That's very impressive. That, that is jokingly impressive. And, and, and that, that is where the scheme is at. And look, Sean Payton did some did some adjustments of how he needs to coach Russell Wilson, obviously from game one to game two. But where did that go in the second half? <laughs> where? And Jimmy, I don't know if you I, I don't, look Rex, Rex Ryan, who who didn't get the Broncos defensive coordinator job, who went on first take and said that he went off on went off this defense. Jimmy, do you know how many passes Russell Wilson threw in the first half? Probably Eight. under yeah, Eight. I was gonna say under fifteen. Eight. The Broncos right now, Jimmy, are the highest average touchdown per possession or a point per possession team in the NFL, highest per average, because the defense can't get off the fucking field. The defense of third down, fourth down cannot get off the field. Mm-hmm. This defense is that bad. And look, guess you can say what you want about the offense and how bad it was the second half. The defense has to be held liable too. And, the and defense the, didn't have a good good weekend this weekend. It's like, it's apparent when you give up an 18 point lead as quickly as you did, and then you have to make the comeback yourself. Yeah, that's that never is supposed to happen in the NFL. And so, Sam Howell, it's not like it was against a guy like Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning, where th- this is what they do. This was Sam Howell's first comeback in the NFL. This was the first cool time too. he had to leave lead his group of guys. The enemy, I don't I don't know. Maybe the enemy was the secret sauce. In Kansas City, because Kansas City's offense still didn't look good. 
We didn't pick that game last week. There is no Chiefs Crazy. game. That, that was a coach that was available in the offseason. That, that was. Was, eh, nope, nope, I'll pass on that. That's crazy, right? Yeah. It's crazy yeah. how things just 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 snake fit us despite us every single week. Doesn't doesn't matter what it is. It, like, like I said, I'll touch on it to pick them, but this team right now, Jimmy, if you looked at the statistics right now, if the season ends today, yes, that's week two. I know it's week two. The season ends today, the Denver Broncos will be drafting Caleb Williams first overall. <laughs> let's 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 uh, not forget, okay? <laughs> that the Broncos still have their first round pick next year, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. So take with that what you will, uh, Sean Payton, uh, Rob Walton, and and the Penner and George Payton. That's all I'm gonna say. Take with that what you will. Last game that we'll talk about from week two, and then we'll get into our picks from week three. Because as I'm as we're sitting here, I I'm giving it to you guys, but I am fading fast. So just you know, pause on that, but put it put it however you want it. That is, that is what's going on. The Bengals fall to zero and two. They are now zero and two in the season. They're zero and two in their own division. That was a very winnable game. They ended up only losing by three. But god damn, the Ravens don't give you the ball ever. It is like playing basketball on Kobe Bryant's team. You're just never getting the ball because I sat there and watched the defense struggle for seven minutes. The Ravens had the ball on the opening drive for seven. Joe Burrow sat on his ass for 35 minutes. That's what happened when you play running back and quarterback, Jimmy. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's just No, he, he did what he needed to, and the defense gave them – the, his credit, he does throw the ball. He has an arm. He That deep ball that he threw, he basically baited everybody into thinking he was going to run and then reminded everybody, oh, yeah, I could throw it over everybody's head if I wanted to. They just don't call these, these pass plays very often. Um, the defense shot themselves in the foot. They negated their own turnover with a hands-to-the-face uh, penalty. I thought they were going to get that punt return called back. When I saw the flag go out, I was like, are you kidding me? Can we have one good thing that happens yet this year? And it ended up being the first good thing that happened. It's our first touchdown halfway through the second quarter of the second game this season. Our offense didn't score until halfway through the third quarter. So we went six full quarters with no offensive production with a $275 million quarterback, the best receiver, quote, in the NFL, end quote. And uh, T. Higgins, a guy that's playing for a contract who finally came alive in the second half. But again, where was he in Boyd in the first half? And Joe Burrow was what had 32 passing yards at the end of the first half. What? I will say the only thing you got going for you is that you started off 0 and 2 last year as well. So so the things this can feels so it, it does feel so a lot different. different. You can basically replay the the same episode um, from last year uh, from from week from week three pick them <laughs> and we basically are reiterating the same shit. What is Jamar Chase doing? What is T Higgins doing? What is why why is this offensive line not giving Joe Burrow the time? Oh my God, is Joe Burrow's leg injury is, is still bugging him? What is going on? And, and look, and the difference and the difference you hit the nail on the head. It's a much different team because Joe Burrow, like you said, it seems as though his leg injury is still is bothering him. It seems as though, and unfortunately. I, and Shannon Sharp said it best. I don't know many people that just heal better during the NFL season, <laughs> that, that, right? Like, 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 unless people, like, like, I don't know if you can think of one because I can't think of one. I can't think of someone that had an injury during the first couple weeks of the season, but all of a sudden they were magically healed. Like, <laughs> I, I, that, that is that's something that he's just gonna have to deal with the whole season. So yeah. you're gonna have to deal with the whole season, which is the unfortunate part. But, yes. um, but like I said, with hit. Same problem with my team. Your defense not being able to get off the field is going to hurt you guys. And and I said it. Your D, your DBs are still deteriorated. Losing Justin Bates hurts. Um, and and having a woozy back will help. But Eli Apple being gone, Burnt Toe's gone. That may hurt as well. Um, but not getting off the field is going to be a big problem for both of our teams. It absolutely yeah. will be because, like I said, when you have look. The best defend, the best defender for Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, just Joe Burrow, Hells, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, was keeping them off the field. The, the play is simple. You keep those guys on the bench, watch, looking at their iPad, watch, w- watching their defense get up and down the field, go up and down, up and down the field. That's going to get their arm rust. That is going to get them cold. That is, like, like yes. We can go back to the conversation about not playing preseason football, but sitting there and watching a team go an eight minute, nine minute drive down the field, that doesn't, you have to warm up again. Yeah. Like you have to grow, you have to do all the things that, that affects a team massively. I think they have no routine set from not playing in the preseason. And then, yes, playing a game like this, it's unfortunate that the NFL scheduled you back to back division opponents, 
But in a 17 week season, you're going to have those situations. Like you're going to probably the way things are, are looking, you may be playing the Bengals in or the Browns in the last week of the regular season to see who makes the wild card because right now the the Ravens are in the driver's seat. Everything happened that the Raiders wanted, Ravens wanted, and they're totally in a great spot. They're two and zero. Oh, they have a division win, and everybody else in the division is one and one. And nobody else looks great. You're the only one that looks somewhat competent on both sides. I do want to give a shout out, say something nice about the two of our teams. We have good linebacker play. Logan Wilson, Alex Singleton, they play like their hair's on fire because they have to carry everybody else around them. Um, our pass rush with Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard has been lackluster. And I know that you're probably not satisfied with yours either. Should be but, the backbone of your defense, and it just has not shown thus far. Yeah, I just said Logan Wilson's all over the field. He had a fumble recovery. He was covering the guys. He was the spy on Lamar Jackson, kept him hemmed in a couple times. He had a, a good game, but the defense around him struggled. And, yeah, we we missed Bates more than I was anticipating, and it's definitely harder to play Lamar Jackson when you have less good DBs. So they were able to scheme us up. Make a running back they got us. throwing the ball. You make a running back good throw, look good throwing the ball. That's the unfortunate part. All of a sudden, they have they don't have J.K. Dobbins, and they they're still going up and down the field. Right? There's no excuse. There's no Justice excuse. Hill made made us look yeah. like a bunch of little kids trying to tackle a grown man. Uh, let's get into week three of the pick'em. I've had the ticker scrolling across. This has the the team that's favored and by how much. I also have the over under set for each of them. Starting off on Thursday night football. This game, I think people were – I'll hand up. I picked this game to be the NFC Championship on Talking the Gridiron. I would like to retract my statement. I've already jumped off of my Giants pick. Uh, I know nothing about football. I'm putting that out there here and now. This is my pick for the NFC Championship, but I do think this was picked as a Thursday night game for a reason. People thought that, hey, Giants are coming off of a playoff season. They just gave their running back money who got an injury – not as bad as the injury that we saw last night, unfortunately. That's one other thing that I guess we should mention for week two. Nick Chubb goes down in one of the most – probably the most horrific knee injury I've seen since Willis McGahee. It was a very similar type thing where your leg bends the entire wrong way and, and he's in a lot of pain and that guy has very strong legs and he's a very tough individual. And if he looks like he's in that much pain, that's unfortunate. But Giants going into 49ers. The 49ers are favored by 10, over-unders 45, 44 and a half. I would say that Dable is going to be able to do something to kind of mess with Shanahan, but the way the 49ers look the last couple of weeks, I've been on talking the gridiron with one for this entire winning streak. He's unself, he's insufferable, he's unbearable, but unfortunately nothing that he says isn't true because Chris McCaffrey looks <laughs> the meme is hilarious, but every time the every time Chris McCaffrey gets up and then it's Stone Cold Steve Austin from Long Start, that's all the white man runs a football. I was like, oh, yeah, no, but it's no. true. And Trent Williams, Trent Williams has to make the games more interesting for himself. He's purposely trying new techniques that put him at like a disadvantage initially. And then he just bullies everybody. And the defensive line looks great. Like the 49ers, I'm not picking against them, especially not with the bogus ass Giants. My bogus ass does Jimmy doesn't know football Giants. Jimmy, I, don't, I, I don't know if you saw the beginning of that game, but they let up 28 points to the Arizona Cardinals to start that game. Yeah, they said, they said let's handicap ourselves. To, to, look, they, they they had sixty points scored before, like this season in general, scored before they got a single point, a, a field goal, a two point conversion, or a safety, anything. Sixty points thrown on them, forty points, and then twenty eight, however many points it was in that first half uh, for the Cardinals. I guess I Josh get it. Cobb. I don't know what I'm talking about. I did, exactly, I'm Josh Cobb. and Saquon. I, I I think he he looks like he's gonna be banged up for a little bit too, and. Like we said, Jimmy, the running joke, and let's name a Giants receiver. Maybe that's that'll be in the trivia next year. <laughs> name name two <laughs> Giants receivers, and we an unfair both question. Will not I can't. Be able to. I can't. So I, look, it's San Francisco will roll these guys. I I have zero doubts about that. I'd be very surprised if the Giants without Saquon Barkley um, figure it out offensively this week of all weeks. And the 49ers offensive line, they're just going to rely on the running game. They're going to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Brock Purdy didn't look good, but you have way too many <laughs> amazing Super weapons. Elastic. You have the best left tackle in football. You're never going to get touched. Your offensive line doesn't allow you to get – your tight end is a fucking psycho. He is a psychopath who giggles as he's blocking other grown-ass men 
in an NFL game as he's putting them up on their backs. So George Kittle, the, the 49ers, we're both on them. Um, Broncos at Dolphins. Dolphins are favored by six and a half in this one. Um, this is the first time that the Broncos are going on the road. This is the first time they're going to be the betting underdog. Over-under is set at 48. Mike McDaniel coming off of a big Sunday night football win. But I will say this Dolphins defense is suspect. But now after what we saw on Sunday with the Broncos, I'd say the Broncos defense is suspect also. So maybe we're just going to in the in the middle of a shootout. Maybe two jet two is going to come out there, show the Broncos what's what. But the Broncos are going to be able to score at least in one half. I think they're going to be able to put it together for a half. Don't ask for four quarters. That's a little bit too much. But they can give you 50 cents. Look, look, and here is the moment everyone's been waiting for. I will be fading the Broncos every single pick em week unless it's a division rival. Uh, I, I, that, so I will be picking the Dolphins this week. I, 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 look, I am all aboard the Shador Sanders slash uh, Kale Williams slash Drake May hype train. I, 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 am, I am full, Howell. full tank. Possibly full tank. Sam Howell out of Notre Dame. It's always nice to get a good I, prep school this boy. bad enough. It's going to be one of those three, in my opinion. That's all I'm going to say. This team's bad enough, and that's what I'm hoping for. I think Tua could possibly throw for 300 yards on this defense because all you have to do is you put you put either whatever, whoever Sertan's on, Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle, you just throw the ball to the other guy, <laughs> and he's going to score. <laughs> Plain and simple because our team defense is slow. They can't get off the field. You put these guys in space, they're going to cook us. And cook. Good old Bradley Chubb is going to be rushing the quarterback off of your brand new uh, offense lineman, Mike Mike McGlinchey, who who honestly did not have a great, who had, he didn't have a bad game against Chase Young. No, your they offensive line good. sucked. Don't don't give good. them any exactly. credit. McGlinchey, I, they did not and, good at all. McGlinchey and Bulls on that hail mary both got pushed into Russell Wilson's face. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, I I am be I will be fading my team unless it's against the. Chiefs, Chargers, or Raiders. You can book that down the rest of the season. Is all I'm going to say. So, so I, I, I want this team to lose. I want this. I, I look. I don't have fun anymore, Jimmy. I, I, I am done not having fun. I, I, I am, I am all aboard the suck train. Okay, just pause. Hold on. Big pause on that. <laughs> all aboard the suck train. But, but I am, I am, I am in. I am in on, on, on tanking for one of these three quarterbacks. And look, Russell Wilson wasn't the entire problem this week. But at this point, you need something different. Like you just need something different. And and, and Russell Wilson is just not going to work out here. Plain and simple. A full season and two games, I've seen enough. Plain and simple. You had a great Seahawks career. It did not work here. You can, you can be here for another year or so, and you can mentor Shador. You can mentor uh, 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 Caleb Williams. But your ass is not going to be here in two years from now. Plain and simple. So start getting ready. Start packing your bags and get a hole in, in Hollywood so you can go start doing movies is all I'm going to say. So I'm picking the Miami Dolphins to win, and I will be doing, like I said, I will be picking against the Broncos every week that they don't play the we're division rival because I hate the division rivals. So Write me down for that. Broncos will lose, lose every fucking game. So we go get one of these big three plans. But like I said, quarterbacks are the problem. But it needs to be. I just need to see something different. I just need something entirely different because because this look we're in a mediocre stage. We're in a stage where we're like you know what we're not one of the worst teams in the league. But you know what we're not anywhere near good enough to make the playoffs. So just suck. Plain and simple. Just suck. Put like I, I, it'll be. Tears of joy watching this team lose every week and be like, oh, God, another week to kill Williams. Oh, my gosh, another week to kill Williams. Oh, my gosh, another week to possibly Shador Sanders. Oh, my gosh, another week to possibly drink pain. Just give me something different. Plain and simple. I need something different, Jimmy. I, 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 I want to tank and be as bad as you were to get Joe Burrow. Like, like think about it, Jimmy. You were so bad, and you got gifted Such for it. Backhanded. You got- you got gifted yeah. for it. Yeah, no, I get it. You got gifted for it. And, and that makes me feel better about what I'm going to say, what you just said. Put your hand down. Why are you smiling? Football's fun. Fun, sir. Fun. It's not fun anymore. No, not, not even fun. a little bit. I'm not having fun. It's not fun. It is not fun. Like I said, you want to know my pick? You got rewarded for sucking. I need to yeah. get a reward for sucking. Pause you again will. on that. I could. There's a stupid amount of clips that we could that I, I that, that, that that could be clipped right now for me saying sucking so much. So, well, I'm all aboard the suck train. And pause on that. Make a shirt, uh, variety <laughs> boards. All aboard the suck train. <laughs> Maybe that's our Broncos shirt, but you keep saying it. All aboard the suck train, and, and a number one, three, and then a number two in there somewhere for Shador Sanders. Or not number two, because it won't be number two in the Broncos. But Shador Sanders uh, look-alike picture, and a Shador and a Caleb Williams look-alike picture. That's all I care about. 
Uh, All four of the Star Star Trek. Choo choo, Jimmy. Choo choo. Yeah, I'm picking the Broncos. That may be that may be that may be over exaggerating a little bit here, and I know I'm I'm you're you're on an island. You're you're out there. I'm out there, but but at this point, at least I'm doing it before everyone else does. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I am doing. I am raising my hand, saying I'm doing it before everyone else. You are. Uh, I'm going with the Broncos because I I need to get a, I need a game back on you. I think that this is. I don't know. I mean, the Dolphins had times last year where they looked unbeatable, but last they had times where they they did suck. Like, they did lose. They did have losing streaks throughout the season. The conversation was had. Is Mike McDaniel's shtick just that? Is it just a shtick? Is he going to be able to get these guys back on track? jitsu has been working so far, but I'm not sold on Tua by any means. Um, I don't know. For this reason, for that reason and for the reason that I want to get a game back, possibly in the pick em, I will go with Denver. Shame on you. You're a Denver fan. Shame on no, – I'm just kidding. You're at the right spot. I'm pretty sure I started fading the Bengals before on the radio show in college before we we drafted. I wanted Penny Sewell, but you know, I I don't know what I'm talking about. I've already said that a couple times. Okay, so I wanted Penny Sewell, top top, top uh, lineman in the NFL. As long as he say. is, you but he wouldn't right be winning us and put putting us in the Super Bowl because how true. many Super Bowls least, have the Lions played in? That's true. At least you have Joe Burrow, and you did do right on that draft pick. Like I said, all I'm asking is just one sucky season. I'm not looking. I, I am a diehard Broncos fan. I don't like. I said when I have when it comes to college football, I wear a couple different hats depending on the week. Like really, really, I don't have a team. Okay, I ride or die the orange and blue. And all I'm asking is to just give me something else because I cannot sit there and be a season ticket holder. No, I'm not a season ticket holder, but my family is a season ticket holder. We, I cannot sit there and, and watch this for another four years, which is the Russell Wilson contract. And, and, and look, if you're a Broncos fan and you're telling me you can sit through that for another four years, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think you like football if, you, if you're you. willing to do that. I don't. I think football is not a sport for you. You might want to pick up European go, football. Go because... sell your Broncos tickets and go get abs or nuggets season tickets. Because like yeah. I said, you have a world champion Denver Nuggets. Give me the ticker. And then you have the abs who have won a Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup within the last two years. So go buy – go use your money elsewhere is my plan and simple. Yeah. Uh, I also like uh, for the Broncos over under set at 48. We've mentioned it a couple times. Defenses suck. I would hammer the over. Nobody's stopping anybody that on no Sunday. No so I like the over at 48. Sunday night football, Steelers, Raiders, the Immaculate Conception, yeah. Reception. Yeah. Um, I told Darren I want the Immaculate Reception 2.0 to happen because he was bragging about how the Raiders got the win in week one. And I was like, you know what? I hope that something like that happens. So you have to rewatch that highlight over and over and over and over again. I don't think Franco Harris really caught that ball, but I just love the fact that you can piss off a Raiders fan just by two words, immaculate reception, immaculate reception. The Raiders are favored by two and a half, but that's just the home field advantage. The Steelers got a win on Monday night football last night, but the Browns, if, if they didn't get everybody injured, I think that the Browns, pull away and, and actually show what they're made of. The Steelers took care of business and you can't fault the team for winning, but you can't I have not been scoring 14 points defensively is all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, no. And, 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 when you have TJ Watt on the field, you don't need an offense. Like, like, and that's where I'm, um, that's why I look, uh, yeah, I'm never going to pick the Raiders, but I will pick the Steelers here. And that's how confident I am in this defense playing simple. And then look, it's still a top five defense in the vote in football. TJ Watt, has been the best defensive player in football the first two weeks. And I would like to see someone come argue with me on that because it's very hard to find one. Um, TJ Watt has been that good. He's been that good. So I, I am riding the Steelers, and Kenny Pickett did not look good. Uh, but the running game slowly got there, and, and, and their offensive line looks halfway better, halfway better. Um, but their defense will still – like I said, look – the Raiders scored 10 points because the Bills felt like it was a charity and then wanted to give them a couple points so they didn't feel so bad. So, so, and that was, and look, the Broncos are already as bad as we've already talked about. So, they scored a total of 26 points, Jimmy. They scored a total of 26 points. The, 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 the Steelers defense have scored half of that by themselves already. I don't know if that, look, I can't know, I don't know if it's on my head if they scored a defensive touchdown the first game. They've scored half of those points already on, on by themselves. So give me the Steelers. They played the, the 49ers week one, so I don't think they did. Yeah, but yeah, 14 points last week. It's impressive. 
but you know, the same reason you can't pick the Raiders is the same reason I'm not picking the Steelers. So we're we're fading that. each other on that one. I respect um, that. So we're going to have movement no matter what this week in the pick them because we're going to have games that go opposite ways. Right now, just on paper, it looks like you're going to get another two games on me. It looks like I'm throwing this thing if you're just looking at the picks. Look, I would love to see the Broncos win a game as well, but then again, I don't. So hopefully you – One game. You don't want to go – you don't want to be that – because you would be the first. You don't want to be the first 0-17 team. This is true. We don't want So you want one. One in 16 sounds better than 0-17. Um. Monday Night Football double hitter. I don't know why they continue to do these, but I guess I'm going to watch so I can play at the same time like... too. I thought there were two different times, Jimmy. No, I turned one game on. I saw right on top of the, the other. next one started. Next one hour later, I was like, "What are we doing here? What, 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 are, what are we doing here? Like, come, come on! Like, what? Well, they knew they knew nobody wanted to watch New Orleans and Carolina outside of those two markets, so maybe it was a little bit of that. And the Brown Steelers is a rivalry game. This week we have the Eagles Bucks as the first Monday night football game. Two, two. Philly is favored by five. I said that I was saving my point to make about ego for the Eagles till this point. I think the biggest ego that they have to overcome is this new offensive coordinator. Because as we mentioned, when you're a good team, you lose pieces and they lost both their offensive and defensive coordinator. And for the first game against the Patriots and for the first half of that game against the Vikings, when the Vikings had the lead, Somebody decided to tell his offensive coordinator that Jalen Hurts is Joe Montana, and he's not. He he can throw. He is getting better at the throwing the football part, but the Eagles are built on their running game. So how it took them until the second quarter to figure out, let's just run the ball for 13 out of 15 plays of this drive. Every time that we get third and, de- third and one, fourth and one, when we get down to the goal line, we'll just push, push, and our quarterback squats 600 pounds. Good luck stopping him. Why you knew that's the team's identity. You didn't do anything to change that. You have receivers that when you have a running game that's opening up play action, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith will push the field that way. But it's not an offense. It's not the air raid offense. And it's not the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And I think that's what people wanted Jalen Hurts to be. Ergo, their offensive coordinator. Run the damn football. Run the football behind this offensive line that you've created. Landon Dickerson and Jordan Mailata to be on the same side of the offensive line is a crime because that's 370 pounds and 330 pounds a man on one oh, side. And they also have the best center and arguably one of the top three left tackles in the game on the other side of football. That, that is wild. So Jimmy. It's no, I, Jason Kelsey, I've said it many times. He's my favorite player. I love him. I'm a Eagles. I support the Eagles on the NFC side. I don't necessarily call myself an Eagles fan, but I'm you know, a Rocky don't fan. Anything, so. about nice, anything nice about the state of Phil, city of Philadelphia? Don't no, you I just I just really like Jason Kelsey, and I rooted hard for them. Pause. I rooted for them when they were playing the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and I was super happy when they ended up winning because I like Peterson. I had nothing wrong with Peterson until he threw that game on national television and, uh, and everything else like that, but – I'm picking the Eagles. I do think that they're going to continue to to roll. It does give me a little bit of pause. You know how many yards Baker's thrown for in two weeks? Baker looks good. Baker's thrown for 500 yards and three touchdowns in two weeks. I think he has one pick. Baker looks good. Like it's it's it, like 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 let's 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 not forget who he was throwing to in Cleveland. Let's not forget who he was throwing to in Los Angeles last year. There was no Cooper Cup. There was no Puka. In last year, and he was, and the best receiver he he ever had there was Jarvis Landry, in Cleveland. He has arguably one of the most underrated receivers of this generation, Mike Evans, and he has a absolute speed demon in Chris Chris Godwin on their side, in a running game that looks very very good, Jimmy, very good, very very good. And look, the defense all of a sudden, and look, yeah, they played the who they played last week, they played uh. Um, they played the Bears, who the Bears yeah, are really bad. The Bears, don't get me wrong, the Bears are horrendous. But Tampa Bay, the season window, and Baker they're Mayfield, sneaky. They're, they they're sneaky. They're very sneaky. I'm picking the Eagles, though. I would, but but I'm I would not be surprised if if this is if this is a hiccup. This is, this might be a hiccup game, in my opinion. Buccaneers, they they get a big win this week. Look out. Falcons yeah. gonna win this week. We we may be talking about the worst in division football. Nah, it might be the best division of football. One of the sneakiest divisions in best in football. It it looks like it could turn out that way. And that's the thing that I think a lot of sports fans don't quite get. And and I like the Pat McAfee show because they were talking about that too. 
But it's not like these NFL athletes, they're only as good as when they come into the league. So I think Baker was okay. He was good in that Cleveland situation initially. He's continued to develop, and he's a smart football player. He's He runs the quarterback position from his mind. He, he knows checks. He's able – I mean, the, it's the, the classic line, but he, they caught him on the hot mic. The defense made some shift, and in the middle of his cadence, blue 80, blue 80. That's fucking cute, guys. Is that what? I was like, what the – he knew – he expected this? He, he watching – somebody's been watching film. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, it's crazy what a, a highly ta- talented uh, college quarterback watching film does for, for a guy, huh? Crazy. <laughs> I don't know if Mike Evans has ever had a quarterback that maybe had all yeah, of that talent but just decided to watch no hours of film. But, you know, he, he probably has experience in that regard. We're both on the Eagles in that one, but we do have the same feeling. The Bucks are a scary team. Last Monday Night Football very game. Very frisky. Very frisky. Yeah. What do you say? Very frisky. Pause again on that. That's, that's of- five. That number five, like, I would take the plus five. I would take the plus five at the very least because I could see the Eagles having to kick a field goal to win, and and that would give you your money if, if you put plus five for for Tampa Bay. Uh, last game of the weekend, Monday Night Football game, doubleheader, Rams going to Cincinnati, the Bengals playing in prime time, which the past two seasons haven't been the worst. Before then, I hated primetime games. I especially hated Monday night games because the Bengals are always flat on Monday night. This is the game where they're inducting Boomer Siason into the ring of fame. So Boomer's going to be famous now, even more famous than he already is. Um, but I, I, that's, it's supposed to give you an emotional boost, but this last weekend was AJ Green just retired and was the ruler of the jungle in, in the house. And you put up a dismal 24 points that you scored almost that. all of <laughs> In the second half, like it's a Super Bowl rematch from two years ago, so let's not forget about that. And the Aaron Donald situation is still probably fresh in people's minds. Um, if, look, I'll, I'll, the, the Rams have looked too good on offense for me to be really confident in this pick. Absolutely, and look, P- Puka Nakua, um, he has been a fantasy god, is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> he, he, look, it is, it is the highest amount of completions for a rookie receiver through two games in NFL history. Yes, you read that correct. You heard that correctly. Puka Nakua, uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, I might be pronouncing his last name wrong, but the first name is Puka. He has the most receptions for a wide receiver through first two games of his NFL career. That is wild. And look, obviously, no Cooper Cup. And look, he's not sneaking up on anyone anymore. It's not anymore. It's plain and simple. So the Bengals will be keying on him. Um, absolutely. And But like I said, and the Rams running game, who knows what their running game will look like. Safford looks like he looks a lot better. Um, this is a game that the Bengals should win. It absolutely should be. The Rams are not as good as they were two years ago. They're a lot They're a lot more depleted, in my opinion, than this is very true. And the Bengals look like a better team than, yeah. than, than, than two years ago. Obviously not through the first two weeks, but on paper they do. So I'm picking the Bengals here. I'm not picking against your boys. Um, but this is a game where if you lose, there's going to be some questions in the locker room. And, and and mainly, mainly it's going to be your offense coordinator, your head coach, are going to be the main two guys. Being like, why are we not giving the Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and Joe Burrow situations to succeed? That's going to be the biggest question if you lose this week. Because, like I said, the defense for the Rams is depleted. Outside of Aaron Donald still being there, it's not good on the back end. You're not throwing against Jalen Ramsey anymore. You're not throwing against Eric Weddle and his company and, and the Rams. It's more sport depleted. Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, and, Com- and, and Jamar Chase and company should have a better day. I, I really don't understand it because the same – the issue that I brought up with the Eagles um, losing both their coordinators, the Bengals have had their coordinators and their head coach. It's the longest time that those three have been together on a single team. I think they've been together for the last four years. So this is not a new offense. There's no new terminology. You have a few new pieces. And defensively, for the past two seasons, Lou Anarumo has been a wizard. Like. I was nervous every offseason that some team is going to hire him for the head coaching position, but he continues to stick around. So they should just – it should be better than it is. But this has been par for the course for the last two weeks. It is a little bit worrisome now. I'm I'm a fantasy owner of Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and I think they were both shifted to questionable, or maybe that was Debo. It was Debo Samuel. It was my other receiver. But Burrow switched to questionable in the fantasy apps. Um it, it didn't it, it just doesn't look good it doesn't look like what i've been accustomed to and that's really unfortunate because i just started getting used to being good and now 
now I might have to go convert myself back to taking the positives out of a 35 to 13 blowout. But I don't want to have to start doing that again, Nico. I did that for too long. That's been my entire radio and broadcasting career. I, I, I want to be good. Can I continue to be good, please? Why can't, we have, why can't we all have nice things, right? Why can't we all have nice things? Real quick to recap for the games, Nico picked the 49ers, the Dolphins, the Steelers, the Eagles, and the Bengals. My picks were fairly similar except for the two. I picked the 49ers on Thursday night, Broncos, Raiders, then we're on the same thing for Monday night game. So Philadelphia, Cincinnati. Um, everything should be fairly interesting. There's a lot of good matchups this weekend outside of the games that we're picking. So I, I know I've been glued to my TV for the past however many weeks. Um, shout out Raleigh for, for dealing with me, but also you, you listen to me for the Vikings information and the Vikings information right now is they suck. They need to get rid of Kirk cousins and figure out something to do moving forward. Not, uh, not try to waste Justin Jefferson. Like you wasted Randy Moss. Yeah, cough, let's, cough. Not, let's not do that. Let's, Sorry. let's not do that. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed this episode. I know it was quick rapid fire, but we did get a lot of good um, information out. Check out the PLL championship. Check out the rest of the content. I have it scrolling underneath uh, the bottom of us right now. Friday, top of the mountain. I'll be back on if I'm not dead asleep because I do have another night of conferences. It's two nights if, since we're doing virtual. So if I'm not dead asleep on Friday night, virtual? I'll be we'll, It's virtual? Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, it's virtual, but I live too far away. So they start oh. at 3.30. We get out of school at 3. I live oh, too far yeah. away to justify traveling if I get caught in traffic and I miss I, – I, so I was at the school from 6 a.m. this morning to 7.15 or whenever I texted you. Brutal. Shout out to all the teachers out there. That is brutal. Parent-teacher conferences are, are a different thing. But if I'm awake, I'll try and be on Realism Sports Talk for the third week in a row. Is Friday Night Raw show. And then obviously Sunday Scaries will be back live. Um, we'll, we'll figure out a time where Nico's going to be on that show. It may or may not be this weekend. Um, I know you got some other things planned, but yeah, we'll, I'm we'll looking get at gone. the week of October 24th still. Uh, I think I'm pretty open that week. You know, I think uh, okay. there might be a sport uh, um, uh, banner uh, being raised. That, uh, I guess we could probably talk about to that. Have to uh, talk about because, like I said, I may be drowning my sorrows in football by that time, and it may be already. I might have already checked out football. So is all I'm gonna say. Yep, still world champions. Thank you very much. Um, anything else you want to leave the people with before we get off? I know check out, but I really need to change how I say that. Check out the PLL championship this weekend, ABC yeah. Sunday afternoon. I highly recommend it. If your team's sucking, like I said, you have red zone on. There's most people have two TVs. You don't need one feed of one game. Like you can, you can put, put one on red zone on one TV, put the PLL championship on another TV. I'm excited to go. Shout out my boys, Owen and PK. Um, the other liaisons, um, down there, um, going to be in Philadelphia. I'm just glad I don't have to go to that. I got to be careful with how I say this um, because I could be going there. I'm just glad I'm not um, – did not get have to go. Did not have to travel for another travel, weekend. To, to travel another weekend to a city that uh, – Stick with the guy that I, did PR for college. Don't yeah. trust me. I won't let you get your foot in your mouth. Exactly. I, traveled, I now have to travel another week is all I'm going to say. Yeah. No, and uh, be on the lookout. Make Enjoy sure the PLL not- championship in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Reminder, if you're not followed if you don't know <laughs> at feo tv pod already if you don't follow us if you don't subscribe to our youtube channel you want to start seeing this visual content because we we talked before the episode we've been in getting messages from certain people our videos are about to look a lot different we're going to have some different engaging more stuff that like you'd see on tiktok and everything like that we're going to have more shorts clips things like that i know you guys enjoy the long form of the podcast but attention spans are short so we're going to have some new visual content coming out so follow where wherever you can listen every week continue to uh tell your friends about the show we're growing every single week all the content's been awesome we appreciate everybody checking us out and uh listening to the two of us go back and forth on on sports and and just everything in general nico wore sunglasses for the entire podcast so sunglasses and a hat because that's how we do business that's how that's how my mama raised me you you done made it personal you done made it personal. We're going to make it personal. Hopefully everybody has a good rest of their week. Thank you guys very much for tuning in to episode 151 of the Far End of the Bench podcast. For myself, Jimmy Pilato, my co-host, Nico Bryant, we will see you guys next time. Peace. If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. Mm-hmm.